Hello guys, it's Timothy here. Um, it is Monday, February 20th. It's President's Day for whoever cares about that. Um, we finally got some news about Modern Masters 2017, and we've also got some sweet art from Amonkhet that I'm going to share with you guys. If you want to look up the article I'm looking up here, it's on um, Magic Gathering website by Blake Rasmussen. Um, this article was put up today, and it gives us some, like, Initial insight into Modern Masters 2017, which we've been waiting on a while. The set comes out in less than a month, and we just haven't really heard anything about it. There's a lot of uh, people downplaying the impact that Modern Masters 2017 will have, mainly because of uh, Wizard's focus away from Modern and towards Standard. But it's still pretty exciting news. Um, the last Modern Masters set, 2015, I believe it was, uh, I didn't care for it very much. It had a lot of really cool reprints at the Mythic Rare level, and then the rest of the set was really kind of lame, and I didn't enjoy drafting it so much. But Modern Masters, uh, the the first Modern Masters that came out was that 2013, maybe 2014. That set was really cool, so um, I'm excited to see whether or not this uh, gears towards the first rendition or the second rendition. And as always, there are going to be some sweet reprints that uh, are probably going to be Mythics, and you won't open them, but we'll see. So the first bit of news here that um, we're going to share is just packaging, and they released um, a little bit about, oh, there goes my phone, they released a little bit about the packaging here, so just looking at these three cards, we have Domri Raid, um, some random red-green planeswalker that, <laughs> um, honestly, I don't really think sees play. I think I've seen Dummy Raid in Modern, like, maybe once. Um, it's not very popular. There aren't a lot of red-green decks, like, beatdown decks in Modern, so I'm not sure, like, who gave the thumbs up for Dummy Raid to take a spot here, but, uh, it's a decent card. It's definitely good and limited, and, um, it's gonna see a reprint here in Modern Masters. Grizzlebrand is the one that really stands out here, and, uh, I think this is the GP Grizzlebrand. No, this is just regular Grizzlebrand brand art but um grizzle brand is a very good card sees tons of play in modern and legacy it has had one reprint as a gp promo so i wouldn't expect this to be like a 30 or 40 dollar card i think grizzle brand right now is somewhere around uh 10 to 15 bucks i haven't really kept up with the price of it but not not really breaking the bank but also a really good card the cool thing about grizzle brand is what it kind of means for the set um, Grizzle Brand sees a lot of play in Modern, especially in the Grishel Brand decks, um, and the Gorio's Vengeance decks, so this could mean a reprint of Gorio's Vengeance as well, which is an extremely pricey card, has never been reprinted, and if it sees, um, print here, could really, um, reduce the price of Gorio's Vengeance, so maybe there's some sort of reanimator strategy, and then finally we have this chick here, this is Stoic Angel, if you don't know what the card is, it's because nobody plays the card. Um, Stoic Angel is a bant colored 4-mana, uh, 3-4 flying and vigilance. Uh, players can't untap more than one creature during their untap step. So this card sees absolutely zero play. I've never seen this card outside of Commander. And even in Commander, like I think I'm the only person who plays it. <laughs> but uh, it's a really interesting include. So look what we have here. We have a red-green Planeswalker. We have a quadruple black... Um, reanimator creature and we have a bant colored angel so is this going to be um a multicolor focus modern masters that would be really cool um i love multicolor sets but like what what do these cards tell me about the set so far i mean stoic angel is not just a card that you print in like um a two color set right so thus far like modern masters has been a two color set the first and second versions of Modern Masters were focused on the archetypes between two color pairs, and um, that's how the sets were designed, with the color pairs in mind. Each color pair had a thing that they were trying to do. So Stoic Angel's really throwing me off here. Not only is this like a really disappointing card to open out of a $10 pack, but it's also just like... If this is a two-color set, like, this isn't even a card that you'll play very often. So, I don't know. I'm confused about this inclusion. That was it for the packs. But if you do look at the uh, package in here, you also have this dude. And this, to me, screams Snapcaster Mage, right? Uh, I know, like, really seductive-looking Snapcaster Mage. But um, a lot of people 
have speculated that Snapcaster Mage will in fact be in Modern Masters here, and uh, there's no reason for it not to be. The card does need to be reprinted, it does need to be accessible, and um, uh, it, the set does now reach through Innistrad and return to Ravnica blocks, so um, Snapcaster Mage is now viable for a reprint, whereas it wasn't in the previous two. So a lot of people, when they heard that news, they started screaming, well, Snapcaster Mage and Liliana of the Veil, vale, right? Um, but yeah, if this guy is any indication of one of the cards we'll get, it probably is a Snapcaster Mage with new art. Um, that would be my guess. Like, what else are you going to use as the face of your new set? Um, to get people hyped up. Uh, I don't know what else this could really be, but my vote is on Snapcaster Mage here. Now, moving along, um, they actually released a good bit about Lumenket today. No individual cards yet, but a lot of art to kind of get our minds flowing. So if you look at the package in here, you've got Sphinxes, you've got Cat Women, you've got Cat Sphinxes, Jackal things and i don't know elf dudes or whatever or just dudes wearing armor um so that's the first look at amonkhet and the interesting thing here specifically with this art and this art is if we go back to um that little spoiler or leak or whatever the heck you want to call it that came out like um last year at the very end of last year there was this thing where a bunch of people or somebody got a survey from wizards of the coast and it included some package designs and um that person leaked it on the internet and said well here's the uh package designs for the next couple sets coming out and uh wizards responded by saying yes the survey was real but these were just kind of experimental packaging but if you look we've got those two same exact guys down here which could indicate that these are in fact what we'll see from the next couple sets and the interesting thing about that is bolus is on hour of devastation not on Amonkhet. so um, I've heard this speculation from a lot of people, but it seems like it could be true. Bolus might not be around until the second half of Amonkhet, and in fact, I would probably vote on that myself. If you read some of the articles um, from Wizards where they're talking about Amonkhet and they're talking about the card Dark Intimations, the uh, Grixis colored rare from um, Aether Revolt that mentions Bolus, uh, they're being very sheepish about mentioning Bolas. Like, nobody's actually come out and said, well, yeah, Bolas is in Amonkhet. They said, well, you'll see Bolas soon. Um, and that's kind of how they talk about it, which leads me to believe that it actually will be an hour of devastation. So my guess is don't expect Bolas in the next set, but expect it in the second half of the block. Um, so just wanted to mention that survey in case you weren't aware of it the other really cool thing here is that's the pre-release kit not really what <laughs> i was talking about bundles whatever um we do have some information on the planeswalker decks and once again we're getting a gideon <laughs> and we're also getting another liliana keep in mind the planeswalker decks are the powered down versions even though i think the ajani and tezzeret ones were not that bad compared to the nissa and chandra ones the tezzeret i think was actually more exciting than the tezzeret from either revolt and the ajani was not the worst thing in the world it was just too similar to the actual johnny in either revolt here we have another Gideon, we have another Liliana, which of course means another Gideon and Liliana in the actual sets. And um, to correct something I might have said in another video, Battle for Zendikar and Oath of the Gatewatch do not rotate when Amonkhet comes out. So we will actually still have um, both Gideon, Gideon Ally of Zendikar and um, Liliana the Last Hope in standard at the same time that we have these new Planeswalkers rolling in. So... I don't have a lot of faith for these Planeswalker decks until I actually see the card, and we don't really uh, have any information on them. The only thing I really wanted to mention here is, like, how many times can he reprint Gideon and make his art, like, look exactly the same, right? Gideon, to me, is the most boring Planeswalker out of, like, the entire uh, uh, Gatewatch or whatever they call it. Liliana... At least she has a lot of variance in what she does, but Gideons are always very similar to each other, and it um, leads me to believe that it's very boring. Not to mention, there's not a lot of room for a new Gideon, since Ally of Zendikar is arguably the best Planeswalker in all of Standard right now. So I don't think a new Gideon's going to have its time to shine until that Gideon leaves Standard, but even so, like... 
Either that means this Gideon's just weaker and it won't be very playable for a while, or this Gideon is stronger than Ally of Zendikar and it's probably just busted. But we'll see. The Planeswalker decks, uh, yeah, we'll we'll know about those whenever they give us more information. But up close, here's the art. The Liliana art is really sweet. Um, I love the green on it, but the Gideon is just like, hey, here's Gideon. Here's his little whippy thing, whatever they're called. And uh, he's he's here looking like He-Man, so whatever. Um, basic lands. This is really interesting and not something um, that I was expecting. But if you read it, it says, we announced full art basic lands as part of some in-store promotions last week. That's not the only place you'll find them. You'll get them in booster packs. So I don't think... Um, Oh, it says full art basic lands will appear in approximately one out of every four boosters and will be available in other products as well. So I did actually read that before now. So um, it hasn't been that long since they did full arts. They did full arts in Battle for Zendikar. And there's an argument that doing full arts again kind of diminishes like the uh, the uniqueness of it. The more often you do it, the less unique it gets. But first off, Look at these. They are gorgeous. <laughs> they These are actually just really amazing. The mountain is really sweet, and I think, like, these two are really cool. The island, like, they're all great. I'm, I'm never going to knock an artist for their art, but... Um, the the cool thing is they're, ev they're only one in every four boosters, so um, I got to imagine... Like, these will be worth something a little later down the line. Maybe not a ton, but there will be one-fourth as many of these floating around as there are, say, uh, Battle for Zendikar, Oath of the Gatewatch, Full Arts, which is really interesting. And they're all, again, foreshadowing Bolas. We know Bolas is coming, we just don't know which set. But yeah, these are, um, I don't know what the promotions are for. If you go back and read that article, I think it mentioned there's going to be, like, some new player games in store or something like that, but... These are really, really cool in my opinion, and I was not expecting these. I don't think I read that article close enough, and I was not expecting Full Art Lands to pop up. So I'm a huge fan of Full Art Lands. The more often they do it, the happier I am. Um, if you're one of the people who thinks that it really diminishes the um, uniqueness of Full Art Lands, then so be it. But I think they're always really cool, and they're really a way to showcase the art on a basic land and really pimp out your decks. So I think these are pretty sweet. Um, they mentioned Arch Enemy. I don't know a lot about Arch Enemy. I know it's a different, like, kind of format of playing, um, Magic, really, and I don't really know what to expect from an Arch Enemy set. I don't know anything about MSRP, so this is something to look up on your own. I don't know anything about the set. I know, uh, in Tolarian Community College mentioned something about Arch Enemy in a couple, in a couple videos, um, way back when, so look it up there, or look up Arch Enemy yourself, but I don't know if we expect new cards, or if it's all reprints, or if there are even cards included. I'm sure there are, but this is something for me to research before I really talk about it here and then the great part here is we have a bunch of almond cat art that they decided to just kind of show off um <clears throat> excuse me spoilers for almond cat don't start until like april 7th or something like that but they did give us kind of some teaser art here which is really nice like this gideon again this is just gideon being like a dude right um there's nothing really special about this uh, <laughs> there's nothing special about Gideon in my mind. In fact, I'm, I'm calling it, this Gideon is plus one, become a 5-5 five, five indestructible creature till end of turn, minus two, uh, make a thing, uh, M1, you get, you get a planeswalker named Gideon who has plus one, uh, become a 5-5 five, five indestructible till end of turn, and minus two, make a two, I, I don't know, whatever, um, <laughs> this is just Gideon. Yeah, again, the art's sweet, but we'll have to see what this Gideon does to make it really distinct from Ally of Zendikar. Um, Liliana, this is really cool art for Liliana. It's just her being all smug and stuff on, like, her little Egyptian plane and whatnot. But also, who, who's fanning this? Is somebody fanning this right now? Where'd these grapes come from? I have no idea. But this is uh, Liliana, meaning, yes, these two are going to be in Amonkhet um, almost 100%. So we'll see how those turn out. Uh, we have a Nissa here, and I, I don't I don't know why, but we have another Nissa. I have no idea if that means Nissa is going to be in Omniket. It seems like that's the case here. Um, I will take Nissa over Jace, but Nissa has seen a lot of printing lately, and um, I would like it if they did some more unique Planeswalkers instead of 
doing uh, or overextending how often they do the Gatewatch Planeswalkers because it does get kind of stale if you see the same faces over and over again. And there are only like so many renditions of Nissa that you can do where the cards actually feel different from each other. But <clears throat> if it's to be expected that these are the three Planeswalkers in the set then it does seem even more likely that we won't see Bolas until the next set. And if we go back up to the Arch Enemy um, thing, we do have... Uh, well, we have Chandra here. Never mind. So, I have no idea what I'm talking about. Now, these this is the most interesting part here. Um, we have five pieces of art here. We have, like, our little diamond-faced cat sphinxy looking thing uh, with her bow and arrow. We have uh, <laughs> this, this the stork goddess of light with uh, her giant broomstick. Or whatever this is. Oh, it's a sword. Never mind. That's part of a robe. <clears throat> I mean, look at the art on this. What in the world? Like, why Why can't I make art like this? Um, we have cro Crocodile uh, Scepter God thing. Like, the thing from um, the Avengers, except in crocodile form. We have uh, another... This one's circular cat-faced uh, goddess spear-looking thing. Uh, with with arm outstretched doing the Vidalcan pose, and then we have Snake Man, um, which is pretty cool with his little Avicinian. Is this is this intentionally like Avicinian? I have no idea. But the cool thing about this is these are probably gods, right? We know that um, Amenket is centered around like this trial of the gods, and um, this is very likely like five more gods. Are these monocolored? Like these don't indicate. Um, any particular colors, right? It might be just dual-colored gods. But I think one of the most interesting things I heard about after seeing these pictures is um, some people are speculating that the quote-unquote inventions or masterpieces or whatever you want to call them from Amonkhet are actually going to be the Theros gods and maybe these five included, which would be fantastic, right? I, I just imagine in a full art foil version of like Thassa or um, Karanos or like any of the gods is awesome, and that includes these ones here. Now, is that very likely? Um, I have no idea. Like Those are just sweet cards that a lot of people love the gods have a very strong like um fan base so to speak like people just love the cards in general and as somebody who came into the game playing in theros like i think the gods are really unique and cool i have no qualms with them reprinting gods here um i did hear a couple people say well that takes away from like the, the distinct identity of Theros if you're reprinting gods on another plane. But, you know, to me, it's akin to reprinting, like, the Elder Dragons in, or printing new Elder Dragons in Dragons of Tarkir. It's just a way to kind of extend what you've already done into another plane. And these ones are clearly unique enough. Like, <laughs> the, these are way different. Like, I mean, yeah, the, these aren't even close. But they look sweet. They're... Uh, already like just tons of speculation about them and I'm interested to see how much more um, we're going to learn before April but uh, my money is they might do the gods like that's 20 exactly right 15 gods from the Theros set and then 5 gods here would make 20 and then um, what that means is Hour of Devastation would have to have some other theme to its uh, masterpieces or whatever you want to call it but I think these are really cool um, I'd love to hear what you guys think about them, and I think that leads us to the end of the article. It does say um, – oh, well, it said somewhere on this article when spoilers actually start, but maybe maybe I missed it or something. I have no idea. But anyway, um, spoilers will start like really early April. This said still a good uh, two months away. We're going to look more at Modern Masters before we look – Excuse me, at Amonkhet. But this is just a teaser of what's to come. I think it's really exciting. It's definitely got like my, <laughs> definitely got my brain flowing on the set. But um, I will have more videos up when we start seeing more from Modern Masters 2017, um, and I will be putting up <clears throat> kind of ratings videos the same way I did with um, Ether Revolt. So if you think that's going to be helpful, then let me know what I can do to make it really helpful. And if not, just stay tuned for whatever news comes out. Uh, this was a lot of news at once. Um, even though my voice isn't working with me, you might be able to hear it. Um, thanks for sticking around and listening. And uh, as always, my name's Timothy, and I will see you guys next time.